All right, guys. Um, Nero's going to kick this off. Are we Or wait, are we did rolling? you kick it off last time? I, I am I, rolling. Did I do that the first one? I, I don't remember. I can them. do it again. <laughs> okay. I can just do it again. Hey, everybody. This is Nero uh, from La 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 La. Hold on. This okay. has like three names, so. That's okay. Why it's <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Nero from Arizona Studios uh, with a new script on the block and we are doing the Before the Scene segment of the show and I am here with Graham and Alyssa and we are going to review the script segment or the segment from the script, the script segment, whatever, <laughs> of uh, The Lighthouse, you know, that, that movie, that weird movie. Yeah, I yeah. honestly... Would not be surprised if a lot of people haven't heard about this movie. Because yeah. didn't it have, like, a limited run, like, release? And it's probably in a lot of art houses and probably only was in actual theaters for a few weeks or something like that. Yeah, so. like, I think you had to go to only select theaters to watch it. Like, I'm pretty sure it wasn't just available everywhere. That's A24 for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, there we go. <laughs> for the people who brought you Ghost Story, where you had to watch... I actually finish that movie. Wait, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. Ghost story? Oh wait. Oh, I'm. I'm uh, sorry. A ghost story? A uh, ghost. Okay. Sorry. That's the one I'm thinking about the... ghost stories, which uh, is that anthology movie with uh, I think Daniel Radcliffe's in it. No. What? I'll show it to you. Okay. It's totally different. It's like an anthology movie about a bunch of different like horrifying ghost stories. Okay, we'll look at that later. Yeah, but yeah. a ghost story. Yes, the that? one with the actual sheet ghost. Yes. 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 No, I'll never forget that pie scene. <laughs> oh, that went on for so, so long. long. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> She's going to finish that pie. The director's like, yeah. how many She's times gonna... did she eat that? <laughs> I don't know. I also, like, <laughs> I just feel bad that Ryan came with us for that because oh, he, he already is, like, the type of person who has no patience for, like, stuff that is art housey mm -hmm. and then on top of that like that scene oh god Probably really tough yeah yeah are we using the term art house correctly art house uh, film it's just like know. a weird like film. kind of avant-garde mm -hmm. avant-garde yeah, okay. indie art house i think it's well small. i don't think indie is quite the same because indie is about being independent which is about like your budget capacity yeah but i still feel like the those kind of like indie type films are the ones that are like, weirdest yeah exactly <laughs> i don't know abstract Maybe. yeah yeah when you don't have money go for weird <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it covers up the bad like the no budget yeah, yeah, it's bad exactly. because it's weird and it's weird because it's good to a scene that you shot on the white screen with like weird colored lights mm. and it'll still work <laughs> Gosh. Okay, anyway, we're, we're reviewing The Lighthouse, one of their famous scenes. And um, um, Go to No Film School to look at oh, yeah. the script. We're on page 55, and we're starting, like, toward the top. Not the exact top, but close. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> and this was the script that was available to me. I'm sure it's legitimate. And... Uh, We'll get right to it. And Alyssa, you're going to be narrating this one. Okay, you got it. And then uh, Graham is going to be um, the character of young. And I'm going to be the character of old, I guess. And we're going to do this in accents. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe. We'll try. <laughs> to the best of their ability. We're not actors, folks, in case you didn't hear it on the last yeah, we're here however to many episodes. <laughs> we're here to review the script, not <laughs> yeah. give you the best performance. Okay, ready? Uh, interior, living quarters, um, bunk room, late, later that night. Yun is on the floor, pouring himself another. Two empty bottles are by him. He takes another swig. No, no, no. No! And I says, get off me, I says. Oh boy, hold on. This is gonna get loud, isn't it? Oh, that's gonna get <laughs> oh super boy. loud. I haven't watched this movie, so I don't know. Okay. Old sits on Young's bed, staring out the window, fixated on the horrible storm which is tearing the outbuilding apart. He holds a mostly empty bottle. Fallen, fallen. But they never listen. They never. And if I had the chance, they'd never. None of them, goddamn lily-livered Canadian bastards. lack galled cowards. Those bastards didn't fight no revolution. Never. And look at them. Cowards, he woman, all of them. God damn him. 
This is my new favorite episode. <laughs> old, oh, God. Sorry. Old keeps staring at the window. The eaves be fallen fast. Never. <laughs> I can't do this. It's amazing. Don't stop. Any day, breaking my back, working a man harder than two horses, but Winslow, Winslow, I told that dumb bastard. Yep, them eaves is goners. This is a weird start. You guys are kind of going like a little bit western on it. <laughs> Do you hear that? I don't maybe, mind it. Maybe, I This don't... is a whole new interpretation okay. of the story. Give me your can't hook. <laughs> <laughs> I say to him, before four man Winslow, that goddamn Kennedy son of a bitch, fool bastard. Damn it! Am I? I don't want to go west. It's okay. It's okay. You're, you're just, okay. Uh, just. This is your interpretation right. of the role, Graham. Exactly. Well, now know the difference between this. <laughs> <laughs> Always calling me a dog fight, a filthy dog. Old turns. Winslow. Yeah, that bastard. I'll show you who's a dog. Winslow. What of him? Who Winslow? The eaves be fallen. He's always ragging on me. Like a... Like you. Damn fool nonsense. Ragging. How'd you find yourself off that grass island anyhow? Ragging. Who's ragging? What island? That's the trouble with you, Winslow. Yeah, that's the trouble with you, Winslow. <laughs> Jesus, I can't do this. All right. Um. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, that's the trouble with you, Winslow. That's the trouble with ye. Pause. Jan takes a swig and looks old in the eye. Hold on. Those are confusing character names. <laughs> yeah, they, they really are. The trouble with you is eating grass with no teeth. Come now. Your sea matey's teeth was falling out. What are ye getting at, Winslow? Just, just, it seems powerful, hard to, hard to eat grass with no teeth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, it seems powerful, hard to eat grass with no teeth. Goats and sheep and cows, well now, they all got teeth, don't they? You know how you, you eat grass without having your teeth? Oblige me. You rip it out and you swallow it. You rip it out and you swallow it. You rip it out and... I don't know about that. You don't? I don't. What? What? Pause. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what is this about? They're drunk at this point. Just to let you know, they're, they're drunk, as, drunk as shit. And this is what drunk people sound like. <laughs> <laughs> drunk sailors. Yeah. <laughs> or cowboys. I'm not around drunk people enough. Oh my god. If you please, want to say pause. Please keep going. Pause. What? 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 That's what I mean. What? That's the trouble with you. That's the trouble with ye. That's the trouble with you. With ye. No. Parenthetical. Suddenly. I want a steak. I want a goddamn steak. Shut it. A steak. A steak. A rare bloody steak. If I had a steak, I could... Oh boy, I could fuck it. You don't like me cooking? Don't be such an old bitch. <laughs> you're drunk. You don't know what you're talking. How could I possibly like the horse shit you fix us for supper? Them ten kitchen shanty cooks gave you're us fried drunk. donuts three or times a day. Be saying and country that. ham bigger you're than drunk. your fist. You're drunk. You're I'm drunk. drunk. I'm drunk. You heard me. You've been drunk since... Damn ye. Drunk since I first laid eyes on you. You're fond of me lobster, aren't ye? You? You're drunker than Virginie Fence. I seen it. You're... F <laughs> You're fond of me lobster. Say it. Say it. Old is furious. Damn ye. I don't have nothing. Let Neptune strike ye dead, Winslow. Old becomes dreadfully serious. Jan is afraid, silent. Old speaks more powerfully and passionately than any tam... What? Tamberlane? Uh, is Tamberlane? 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 Passionately than any Tamberlane or Lear. 
he calls out to the gods of the sea, a man possessed. Hark, Triton, hark! Bellow and bid our father, the sea king, rise up from the depths, full, foul in his fury, black waves tame with salt foam, to smother these young mouths with pungent slime. To choke ye, engorging ye organs, till ye turn blue and bloated with bile and brine, and can scream no more. Only, only when he, crowned in cockle shells, with slithering tentacle tail and steaming beard, takes up his fell, bin, 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 bin there's a, befined, there's, befined arm, his coral tined trident screeches banshee like into tempest and run you <laughs> through the gut, the gut <laughs> bursting ye a bulging bladder no more, but a blasted bloody film now. A nothing for the harpies and the souls of dead sailors to peck and claw and feed upon, only to be lapped up and swallowed by the infinite waters of of the dread emperor himself, forgotten to any man, to any time, forgotten to any god or devil, forgotten even to the sea, for any stuff or part of Winslow, even any scantling of your soul is Winslow no more, but is now itself the sea. Old is shaking like a lunatic, veins popping in every direction, exhausted eyes drilling into Yun. Yun sweats. What can he do? What can he say? Has he been cursed? Doomed? All right, have it your way. I like your kicking. <laughs> I love this so much. I don't know Why? what the fuck. <laughs> I have to see this movie. I can't believe you guys told me not to. Like, it, I may regret it. I'll live to regret it. I'm sure right. I will. But I'm going to watch this movie. I'm going to watch the shit out of that movie. <laughs> You're about to see the performance of it, oh too. Oh, my God, this was amazing. But, uh, <laughs> but okay, so... Now, talking fun. about the script before we go to that. This is one of the funniest things I've read in my entire life. <laughs> it's um, pretty good. Is it played like a comedy? Kind of, I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. Um, a weird comedy. <laughs> Super drunk. Um, shit, I had something I just to say. love the ending, too, like when he wraps it up. Like, all right, have it your yeah. way. I <laughs> like you. <laughs> like, can... <laughs> it was all for nothing. Okay, yeah. also, on a writing no- note. Noit. Noit. <laughs> noit. <laughs> it was noit. Um, on a writing note, I love that the action description is totally written in the same tone as the whole piece. At the same intensity. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Not just the t- intensity, but even, like, the terminology and everything. Like, it gives in to this whole, like, sea lifestyle. Seafaring. Like, exactly. Nautical. Like, it, it, it reads as though... And what's great is that... I mean, there's really not a lot of action description. It's mostly dialogue, which, again, goes back to that whole, like, breaking the rule of, you know, having too much dialogue and going back and forth too long. But it totally works... I thought it did. I think it's hilarious. Mm. And then when we finally get bits of action description, like, it really just honestly just plays up, like, this is their emotion. This is what they're thinking about and what they're feeling. And it it plays into the universe so well that I imagine as an actor reading it, it just helps you buy into, like, your character's persona. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you feel about, on bottom of page 61, um, when it was, um, you know, after the big cursing dialogue from old, um, it it goes back to, uh, young and, um, where he is after that, like, you know, after that, like, uh, beat down, that dialogue beat down. It breaks, like, every rule, right? Uh-huh. Like, they use they use words that end in L-Y in their action description. Mm. They they have way too much dialogue. There's, they, the, they have, like, descriptions that are things we can't physically see or know. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's just, like, fuck all of it. All of the rules. But I found it wildly entertaining. I mm. mean, I don't know if, like, for other screenwriters reading it, it might be like, oh, God. I mean, for what, like, type of art piece they came out with, I think this, like, is absolutely perfect for their final product. Because that is, like, the movie is almost a mindfuck, and it's, like, um, you don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know. It's perfect. It's a mess. But it's, like, it's an art piece. So I yeah. think it's really cool. I just like that that little bottom at page 61. was like, uh, what can he do? What can he say? Has he been cursed? Doomed? It's, like... 
he was just blasted with this with this dialogue and he was like what the fuck was even that you know Fucking, yeah. even like i'm cheating and i'm reading a little ahead like yeah. if you go to page 62 like even the next like the start of the next scene like again we're looking at a script and it reads like you're reading a poem like it 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 breaks up lines it breaks up pieces it paces itself on the page like it's very much written to be read which is you know, not normally how we approach screenwriting because we write it to be seen, like on the screen, we write for the final product, but this script is written in a methodology that looks like you're supposed to read the script and really buy into what is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost po poetic. I think that's a good way of saying I'm it. trying to remember which um, poet, like, this reminds me of. Like, so... F uh, Faulkner or whatever. I don't know. Something that we've learned in like high school. Do you remember that? I mean, I see that it. time. I know what you're talking about, and it was. I want to say it starts with an H. Robert Frost, Edgar Allan Poe, Walt <gasps> Whitman. Anyway, I'm just now just talking about uh, certain poets that. <laughs> just random. Poems. Yeah, yeah. I do like on the you know, even though we didn't read this segment, but it's like flash the wind, flash the rain, flash the waves, flash the foregone, the foghorn, the foghorn. The foghorn <laughs> is a, a noise, though, isn't it? I think it's um, like you know the the boat's horn. Yeah. Okay, this poem. <laughs> This is totally, like, we're now completely off subject. Okay. This was a poem that I had to read in high school uh, by William Carlos Williams. And mm. this gives me, like, this vibe. You know what I mean? Like, the script What's is, the poem reminds called? me of this. It's called, This is Just to Say. I have eaten the plums. Uh, I, and it's broken up, so it says, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox. <laughs> and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me. They were delicious. <coughs> so sweet. And so cold. I like, like that. That is a poem they teach in school. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel that the spirit of that embodies the spirit in, in of this. In this case, yeah. I totally, yeah. Like, it's it's just the way the, that it's written. Like, there's these jarring, disjointed pause points that make like the humor in it. Mm -hmm. Wow, William William <laughs> Carlos Williams. Mm -hmm. This is just to say. Oh, wow. With even the title, like, yeah, you know just I mean? like, this you is just to say. You yeah. wrote the title, knowing the piece. Like I don't know, it has a humor to it, and I I, I like it. But the, this piece, like this script, is like that. <laughs> mm. I do like the realism of, you know, for 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 a script like I'm looking at page fifty eight. And when you look at page 58, you're like, what the hell am I looking at? Because it's just done. Literally just what over yeah. and over and over again. And um, that's not an exaggeration. But I've been in those, like, conversations where it is just, it just devolves into nonsense. Like, yeah. and that's what the chaos of whatever is happening on screen, Yeah. It, it, it matches. And it's, and that's life, I guess. I don't know. It just feels... Right. I haven't seen the <coughs> film, so I know very little about it. But it is funny because I think about like the lifestyle they live in the sense that, again, when you're dealing with um, a career that revolves around something that you have no control over, and it you know just does whatever it was does on the whim of its own, like <coughs> this script. Well, and they're like, also totally. <laughs> And they're, that. and they're also stuck on this island. Yeah. So, like, that gives them one more thing that they're, like, stressed and going insane about. Not only the job, you know. Like, they're stuck on this island and they, they can't do anything about it. You so. know what? To that point, it's almost as if... Uh, I can almost see this as being part of, like, they've ran out of things to say to each other. <laughs> yeah. And now they're just making noise. For yeah. So because, long. <laughs> yeah, because if you're isolated with one other Another individual, person. what if you do run out of things to talk about? Mm -hmm. And now it's just like someone says what? And you're like, what? You know, so, I don't you know. The first time you pulled this script up, yeah. I hadn't read like the beginning. And I came in while you were talking about the you liked me, me lobster part. <laughs> and I just assumed that was a sexual <laughs> innuendo. And I'm like, I didn't know that this, this went there. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it, it now, does get pretty sexual. Now, now that I have the context yeah. of the rest of the conversation, it makes a little bit more sense. Just so, just a warning for you and also the uh, the people listening. The Lighthouse is a very sexual mm. film. Film. Oh, interesting. Yeah, very sexual for two dudes, and you know. Yeah, like. with very huge age gaps. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Not to, you know, speak ill of oh, no, William, William Defoe. Defoe <laughs> but <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You fancy that? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to bring up the scene now. Are, are, are we uh, good to yeah. do that? Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. This podcast is brought to you by Arizona Studios. Arizona Studios, a full-service video content specialist. We're here to illuminate your message and compel your audience to take the right action. For more information, head to our website at arizonastudios.com and be sure to tune in for more content on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That acting, though. Oh, my God, yeah. How did he remember that entire, that entire monologue? monologue? What you don't see is there's a teleprompter. Yeah, yeah right? He right just there. I mean, his eyes are so wide the whole time he could be. We want to know. <laughs> Does he look like that, like, the whole movie? Because, yeah, like, that much. whole scene, his eyes are the widest I've ever seen them. No, he well, he is disturbing in this <laughs> whole movie, yeah. He has another monologue, probably very similar to the same length as that, um, and later yeah. in the film, pretty impressive. What's crazy is, like, even reading the script, there are beats there in that monologue that he mm-hmm. doesn't take, and that's what's more impressive, is I'm like, you saw that and still chose to keep going. Like, you're mm-hmm. like, they gave me a moment so that I could pause here, mm-hmm. but I, I'm no fucking going for the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, damn. Ugh. We're referring to the monologue on page, I don't know yet, but I'm finding <laughs> it for you so you can see what 61. we're talking about. Page 61 old uh, speech that starts with Hark, uh, Triton Hark. Um, I mean, honestly, they stuck pretty to script. They, the only changes I thought were maybe a few uh, beats here and there that they either skipped over or that they even, like, held on longer than was implied. Like, <coughs> like right before he's like, you don't like me cooking. Like, he, the, like, pause he takes there and the facial reactions that right. he added. Like, they're not in, there's no pause point there in the script, but mm-hmm. it really works, obviously. Um, I, w- I will also say this, like, this is, like, we discussed this before in terms of uh, action description. Yeah. Um, on page 60, <laughs> when he's like, you know, old, old, the old dude, um, Willem Dafoe's character, he's like, I've seen it, you're fond of me lobster. Like, you know, he's, like, trying to get Young to confess that he actually at least likes the lobster, right? Yeah. Uh, Young, in the script, there's two dashes there and nothing else. And Old just tries to say, say it, say it, you know, confess that you like my lobster. Like, he's pausing and waiting um, for him to respond. Right. And <laughs> even though there's no uh, uh, action description here in the in the scene, in the actual scene... Um, we see he's shaking his head, you know, he's giving a visual cue to, uh, old character, like, like, shit, you know, I am losing him, he doesn't like it, you know, I'm like, this is very frustrating seeing, right. like, yeah. That. Um, but they chose not to put that in there, in, on the script, on the page. Yeah, like, they didn't describe the physical action that's occurring mm-hmm. there, which is, Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that when it comes to, do you think um, it's more of a crutch to have a lot of action description? Or is it more so like, um, hey, this is a chunk of dialogue. This is what's important. You know, you don't need to know what else is in in the I think that's area. R- I think that's really tough to say because I think the opposite can be said of dialogue when done wrong like I think that some people use dialogue just to tell the whole story and rely on that and there's no like it's all exposition so so that's a tough question because I I think yes and no depending on the writing like or for instance like let's say it's an action film right and most of what's happening is is describing physical choreography you know like oh my god um (laughs) Okay, recently, <laughs> I tried to watch um, on Netflix a new movie with Ryan Reynolds called, I think it's Six Underground. Or oh, yeah? Oh, my God. Wait, you tried to watch that? Oh, my God. 
probably one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire oh my life. Oh, God. I wouldn't expect you to even give it a shot. I just, I don't know. I thought, oh, it's Ryan Reynolds. He's funny. I like him. Like, it might be decent. It was, oh, my God, agonizing. I couldn't, we, we made it, like, maybe, I don't know, 14, 15 minutes. And the first, I shit you not, like, I want to go time it. Like, the first 10 minutes felt like an eternity. The whole thing, the same driving sequence. Like, the whole intro of the movie Jeez. is, like, just the same driving sequence. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've oh. seen it. And that driving sequence in the it's beginning. It's the longest. It's like, <laughs> when is this going to end? Yeah, it's like the pie <laughs> scene in a ghost story. Yeah. I was like, I know that they're, it's like, longer. having funny dialogue and... Intro- introducing the characters in that driving scene, mm. but... Well, and spoiler alert, like, at the end of the driving scene, the driver dies, like, gets impaled, and then it's kind of like... Like, we spent the first ten minutes investing ourselves in this kid driver because that's the only thing we're really seeing happening for the first ten minutes. He's a young kid. And then yeah. he dies, yeah. and it's like... What's happening? And in his dialogue during the driving sequence, he's like young and reckless and kind of like has an upbeat attitude yeah, about it. Like they're being chased by obviously some big bad mobster people and mm. he's like just having a good time. And, and they're, he in, dies. they're in like <laughs> the most blatant, obvious, like bright green, like Lambo, sport yeah. car and it, trying to escape from like, you know, black SUVs. Mm. And it. Ah, ah, ah. Anyway. But in that movie, like, and again, it's a bad movie, so it's probably a bad example, but I'm just saying, like, that script was all, I mean, had to have been mostly action description for the choreography of the sequence to make sense. Mm-hmm. Because the, the car, the vehicles driving through the city as different members of the team are coordinating and doing things the time out together with where the car is at in, mm-hmm. in the city. So even though it was fucking terrible... It, I mean, it was a professional script, and it got made, and it got filmed, and it's on Netflix. So they're doing something right that we're not. So <laughs> Hey, uh, produced also by the director, Michael Bay. Oh, so yeah. he can, he oh, can, he can make his movie. Yeah, he can do whatever you want. <laughs> to, and and yeah. probably Ryan Reynolds had fun on that. Oh, I'm I mean, sure. It's a, it's I a f- like to think he has fun on everything. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and if he doesn't, he has fun making fun of it in the next Deadpool movie. Yeah. Anyway, but... Um, but my point is is just that it really just depends on the story and what's happening, what works for that. You mm-hmm. know, like I think that action description can be vital if you're telling a story that is mostly silent or uh, like, in, you know, in terms of dialogue um, or that's just very dependent on action choreography. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like I've read scripts. And seen movies where there's very little to no dialogue, and it was great. Mm-hmm. There are some that are not, <laughs> but I, I think that we, in the past few scripts we read, have been specifically reading scenes that are famous for having, you know, very strong, well delivered and relatable dialogue. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that's the only like good type of writing <clears throat> well maybe the next uh set of scripts that we introduce on in this in the series should be like action focus ac- a- yeah action focus and maybe we can like yeah uh, of course like with these scripts that we just did um uh, marriage story uh lighthouse and um joker, uh, joker they're all you know that is the moment of dialogue mm-hmm. for that movie yeah you know well even so. joker has As an example, like, they have a lot of silent, like, silent or mostly silent scenes where a lot's happening that's all physical, that is you following the story, but obviously the most famous and pivotal scene is dialogue, which makes sense, because honestly, the thing that I think audiences care about the most are the actors. Like, they're the people that we know their names, that Mm -hmm. we relate to, that we want to watch everything they, they do, you know, so... That's why those scenes stand out the most to people or are the most famous is not because the rest of it isn't written very well, but because, you know, we love this actor and the way they deliver the dialogue is so strong that, you know, it makes you want to hear more from them. <clears throat> so kudos to actors. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys make it. <laughs> yeah, you guys make it happen. <laughs> Let's see. Is there anything you didn't like? Any any anyone wants to <laughs> chime in on that? Was it odd? I mean, it is odd. It's odd. Yeah. But that, that's why it's good. That's it's, what makes it great. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this movie, and I know that it's probably going to be more abstract than I would normally like. Mm. But fuck, I'm sold. Like, that <coughs> scene is so fucking funny. I, I do want to see the rest of it. Well, Although I think it's funnier when you guys deliver it, obviously. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best voice Graham has ever done on this show. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it. You're welcome, people. <laughs> it's still confusing to me, and I've read the script word for word. Um, just, and originally watching it... Um, I wish I had subtitles, and as soon as it comes out on DVD or wherever I can watch it with subtitles, <clears throat> it would be absolutely amazing because it's a very confusing movie, and even if it had subtitles, I feel like it'd still be um, yeah. too abstract for me to understand, but it's nice to be able to read word for word what they're saying. Unfortunately, I'm still confused, I'm but still confused. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and I haven't watched it, but this whole bit with Old when he's going on about, you know, like basically damning Young. Mm. Does he actually just be- thoroughly believe in this? Like, is he is he portrayed as someone who has this like strong faith in yes. some sort of sea god? He's um, <laughs> old character is very like uh, superstitious okay. uh, when it comes to nautical. So this is real life. to him. Yeah. Like, even though he's drunk, like this isn't just him being eccentric to like scare Yun and give him a hard time. Right. This mm. is like he genuinely curses him. Right. Wow. Poor um, Yun. Right? <laughs> yeah. What do you do? Just say you didn't like your cooking? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. And uh, I think that might have been like day four or five of mm-hmm. being on this island. End and there, there's also, um, here's also some context that's missing is um, why Young is also kind of being not so nice. Yeah. Is that um, he's doing all of the hard labor on the island. He and is young. He is young. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's frustrating when, um, you know, the uh, old dude is, like, not helping at all. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the way he sees it. It's like, He's well, what the him. hell? You know, you can at least help me with some things. You you are my senior officer person. Show me how I should be, you know, tending the things. Right. Like, telling him to redo stuff because he didn't know how to do it because he wouldn't show him. And, yeah. Yeah. Just, well, but, Okay. I mean, I haven't watched it. Yeah. I haven't watched it. But I mean... But I'm adding that's the context of... For sure. The, of the animosity between the two characters, I think. Gotcha. Um, so Old is portrayed as... Is he portrayed as being lazy or is he doing it meaningful? I don't like, think he's he, lazy. I wouldn't consider him lazy. Um, like you? he's testing him on purpose? I feel like he kind of is giving him a test. Um, I think uh, uh, he's, uh, I think he's self, selfish, selfish. Yeah, well, he's definitely very selfish. Because he, um, okay, the lighthouse, um, the lights house, uh, the lighthouse itself, sorry, (laughs) the lighthouse itself is almost seen as this mythical thing. Yeah. Um, the light from it is something that's like almost something to praise and be, you know, it's such an honor to take care of that light. Okay. And um, the old man, he he wants to keep that honor to himself. He's not he's not letting Winslow even touch it or even go up it. It's like no, you're you're forbidden from going up there. That's me. I I do that. Gotcha. You know, and uh, Winslow is getting jealous. Like, well, what the hell? I want to go up there. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, like in a rebellious kid kind of way. Like yeah. you told me I can't, therefore that is what I want the right. most in the whole world. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. And almost like as you're talking about their characters in the story, it sounds like the conscious decision to call them old and young in the script. Like it seems like obviously it's motivated by the the whole underlying arc of the story, and who their characters are, you know, characteristically, because again, like. To have the instinct to be rebellious against someone because you feel cheated because, you know, they have it a little easier, they get access to things. That is such a youthful, Mm -hmm. like, pride thing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's definitely part of the 
the subcontext of the movie, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We we can wrap it up if you guys want to. Okay. I guess we'll wrap it up because we want to. Because <laughs> we want to. All right. We don't want to talk to you guys anymore. <laughs> well, Please tune in next time. <laughs> uh, that, that's three down so far of um, this series uh, before the before the scene. <laughs> He's looking for the title somewhere. Yeah, I gotta get used to the title. <laughs> <laughs> We're three weeks into this. Come on, Nero. Come on, Nero. Oh, yeah. My gosh. <laughs> How long have we been doing this? <laughs> um, uh, so maybe um, for for the next set of scripts that we do, we're gonna um, try to find the ones that do have like a diversity of like action description. For and sure, something that really like yeah. If you're out there listening and there's any famous or infamous scenes that you'd like us to read on this series, go ahead and send us that in your comments. Uh, you can comment at us on our YouTube channel in this in the animated episode. Uh, from today's podcast or you can go check us out on soundcloud comment there or send us an e- email at info at arizona studios.com sorry plug <laughs> no problem that was good that's such a good plug anyway uh anyways like <laughs> okay <laughs> uh goodbye <laughs> do i say goodbye <laughs> all right you'll hear us next week all right cool bye